Geoffrey Archer doesn't like looking back. His London home on the Thames screams of his financial success. Every single day I get up, I look down the river and think how privileged and lucky I am. The man who seems to court controversy. The reality is that Archer is a self-motivator who just can't stop once he gets the bit between his teeth. And what motivates me is the sheer desire to achieve something. Since 1976, Geoffrey Archer's books have sold more than 300 million copies around the world and counting. He's every publisher's dream. His books sell in millions and is not afraid to sell himself in the process. Storytellers are born. I think that that's a gift. Uh, writers are well-educated people who uh, have had a good education. Um, I'm not a tenor. I'm not a violinist. Uh, I'm not a ballet. I'd like to do the ballet, but I'm a storyteller. So that was a bit of luck, really. Geoffrey Archer, best-selling author, one-time member of the House of Lords, a would-be London mayor and former prisoner. Jailed in 2001, he served two years behind bars for perjury in a legal case relating to payments to a prostitute in the late 1980s. What's the biggest regret of your, of your life? Not really getting as far as I should have done in politics. Uh, that was a failure in that sense. Interrupted by going to jail, I suppose. Yes. Uh, how can I complain when uh, the storytelling has gone so well? So one of the biggest regrets is not uh, the perjury? No. Do you feel like you were wrongly convicted of that? No. Did jail time change you at all? No. You stayed the same. Did you become a better storyteller? I certainly met interesting people who uh, were able to give me stories, most of them not true, but one could see from the gem germs of that that uh, there was something bigger. You have a number of Australian artworks. I love Australian art. Yes. I'm a great admirer of... A passionate art artists. buyer, the walls of his penthouse resemble a sophisticated gallery, including precious Australian pieces, a far cry from bankruptcy he experienced in the 1970s. Arthur Boyd, of course. Yes. Uh, it's really quite special, oh, isn't it? I just think it's wonderful. Yes. I mean, it says Australia. Mm. Very in much. a breath, it says Australia. Mm -hmm. But he's a genius. I mean, if he'd been born in the United States, he'd be a household name across the world. Mm. But politics was his first passion, and Margaret Thatcher, his idol. Do you think Margaret Thatcher could have brought something else to this Brexit dilemma? She would never have allowed it to happen mm -hmm. in the first place. Uh, it would just would never have happened under Margaret Thatcher. She would have anticipated where we were going, and she'd have stopped it. Uh, so, no, it never arose. You didn't vote uh, to leave, but you No, I voted to remain. You voted to remain, but, but you don't think there should be a second... A no, second certainly question. not. I'm a believer in democracy. On balance, a dictatorship would be easier, but I'm a believer in democracy. We voted whether we would remain in Europe. I wanted to stay. I lost. For me, that's the end of the discussion. Get on with it. Certainly I've never spent as much time on a book and I don't think I've ever had a better idea. And once I got the idea, I thought, this will take time, it's got to be done properly. Pen to paper. For Geoffrey Archer, the first draft has always been keyboard free. So I want to go on writing, but I don't know at 78 how much longer I have. It was written that you fear death. I don't fear it in the sense that, uh, no, not in any way at all. I fear it in the sense I still got things to do.